Okay, guys, we're going to look now at the last stage, which is the analyzing and evaluating. And this is a big hurrah because once you've done this, we are done, which is great. So let's go ahead and have a little bit of a look at what this comprises of. So for 2021-22, which is obviously the, the year that we're doing here, we are obviously not able to evaluate the finished prototype because we've not made it. So we need to be um, looking at other ways of evaluating throughout the whole project. So I've highlighted in green here that the, this, this section is actually a bit of a funny one because it's not really so much a clear cut, write an evaluation at the end of the project, then that's a big um, tick done. What they're actually looking for is that you're doing it ongoing, like it's throughout the whole project. They don't want they don't want you to just write a summative one at the end. They they need to see that throughout the whole project you've done lots of little sort of user feedback um, boxes and you've put on lots of little specification check boxes, and that you're saying what decisions you made and why. That's the kind of evaluation that's really helpful because it's actually guiding the development of your design. And you can evaluate anything from a CAD model to a physical model, a sketch, um, even looking at like material tests or materials research that you've done, that's all applicable. All of that can be evaluated and, and all of that is an evaluation essentially. Um, yeah, and then the last point there is obviously there's no expectation to test the final prototype, but you must find way to test, find a way to sort of test the final design. And that's really what I'm gonna be talking about in this video is how do we go about actually then doing a final evaluation at the end? So let's look at the mark scheme for this. So basically what they're saying is for the criterion one, they want to see that you've done lots of, um, lots of evaluation throughout the whole project. Um, and I've said here, I've sort of summarized that, I was saying, just saying continuous testing and making sure that all improvements are linked to the testing that you did. So if you change your design or you change an aspect of your design, you say why, and the reason why will be because you then say, well, because I did this test and I was looking at using this material and it wasn't very appropriate, so I changed the material and then it turned out to be much better. Um, that, that's what I mean by, you know, you're linking your changes to tests that you did. Um, the second criterion is comprehensive testing of all aspects of the final prototype design against the design brief and the spec. Now, this is the only one that really requires you to do a summative evaluation at the end. Um, now, you can help yourself by constantly referring back to your specification throughout the whole thing and your design brief. Like, lots, every page really should have a specification review checkbox on it or some sort of review against the brief, something like that. Like it, that can all count towards that criterion. Then the last one is excellent ongoing analysis and evaluation. Yeah, so again, it's just continuous and ongoing analysis and evaluation. So the way we're reading into this is that it really is that they're actually really wanting to see, they're more bothered actually about seeing continuous evaluation rather than just one big summative one at the end. So. What I'm going to suggest for our section F is you can have, I would say though there's should be really like um, two mandatory pages. I'm actually going to call this user testing um, interview. Now, user review actually would be a more appropriate name for that because we can't really test it, but you can review it. So what this would look like would be you sitting down with your with your client and then showing them the final design. So that might be some renderings or something like that. And, and showing them like, and, ex and talking them through how the design will work. And then that will give you some outcomes from there. After that, you then do what's called an analysis against the specification. This is a very, very simple document. And I'm going to show you on the AQA provided example here. This student finishes their manufacturing section just by showing like, yeah, there's, there's the finished product and they've finished the whole thing there. Then this student got 19 marks out of 20. Now that's on the original mark scheme, not the modified one for the section F. So what they've done here, so bear in mind, yes, that the example would be expecting to see more from, from this kind of evaluation because it was the full mark scheme, not the modified one. So what they've done is they've got their specification points down on the left from section B. They've then written a little evaluation 
for each point, basically talking about how well did I satisfy these criteria here. Then after that, they've done a final user interview. And this is great. Like, it, I mean, it's not particularly extensive, but it's all it needs to be. It's just you're basically just talking through with with your with, say, two users or yeah, um, they, I mean, they've done a client and a user, which arguably is the same thing. So they've, let's just say they've done two user interviews here. And really, with the purpose of this is they're just getting feedback on it. And they're just seeing what was good and what wasn't so good. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying the mandatory pages. So it's really two pages that we need to have. Now, if you want to go a bit further and above and beyond, then what you can do normally in a um, in an evaluation, they would expect you to to do some improvements and yeah and things like testing but obviously we can't do testing because we've not made anything but and this is where the testing that we can do is is done throughout the project from you guys testing materials and testing models and that kind of thing so so we sort of ticked that off earlier on so improvements now these can just be little sketches where you're just sort of you could you could do what this student's done where they've just got photographs and they've sketched over the top and they've obviously sketched on here a little dimmable switch to go into the cable and they've drawn like the book on top. Um, and, and that's that's fine. It's just showing that you've, that you've taken what the clients have said and you've then done something about it, like you've taken some action upon it and you've then looked at it and gone, oh, okay, well, I could maybe just modify this or add this little bit on. Or it doesn't have to be, you're not doing radically different um, whole CAD renderings or something. Although, mind you, CAD rendering is a very easy way to show an improvement because you can just change a material or something, or you can add a tiny feature to it, re-render it, and then just say that's, you know, change the design. So it's not, this is not mandatory. It's, it's desirable, but it's not mandatory. Um, yeah, if, if you do do it, it just secures you into, this, into the top band. But it's, it's a very weird one because the exam board this year, they're not saying specifically that they need to see improvements in section S. So I'm more bothered about you getting a really well written up um, analysis against your spec and having lots and lots of ongoing analysis throughout the whole project. That's more important. Okay, so that is really all you need to do um, for section F. So thank you very much and thank you for persevering through this anyway.